The sunny southeast lived up to its reputation as rounds 5 and 6 of the 2010 Connacht Competition Engines Hill Climb and Sprint Championship were blessed with golden sunshine. The beach at Duncannon made a stunning backdrop to the start of Saturday's event. Holidaymakers and motorsport fans had only to stroll from the beach over the sand dunes to enjoy some first class racing. It got so hot on Sunday at Featherdown Sea that tarmac began to melt and the road surface became quite tricky as Willie Fogarty would prove. In his Abarth Autobianchi, sideways here and unfortunately crashing at a chicane on the final run. Ray Cunningham was sparkling in his yellow mini. Winning class one on each day but with last year's class champion Bobby Hennessy just over two seconds behind him. Local driver Niall Whitty entertained the crowds greatly in his twin cam and won class two while class championship leader John Bradley struggled to come to grips with some driver's aids he'd had to fit to his car. He managed to pull the right levers on Sunday however, returning to winning form chased around every corner by his son Colin with an equally committed driving style. Stephen Gillis's Westfield was the perfect car to enjoy the weather in, and purposeful too. Class 3A was his both days, chased home by Cyril McCabe's stunning Alfa Romeo at Duncannon and John Whitley's Golf GTI at Feathered. Aina Carroll whooshed his way to a couple of victories with his turbocharged Civic, but Dennis Hogan is getting ever closer to him with his roaring M3. In his Mark 1 Escort, which matched the colour of the sky, the ever sideways John Farrell was the fastest of the historics. John, needing no time to build his confidence after a massive crash at Valley Alban last year. With Laura Eustace winning the Formula V class outright at both hill climbs, the ladies award went to Elaine O'Reilly in the purple mini on the first day, and the driver of that now famous Fiesta from the 80s, driven by Trish Daly, got the award on the second day. John Byrne scorched the road on day one, first in class five and sixth overall. John Mahon was second, but would struggle with drive chain problems on day two, where Byrne was usurped by Joe Courtney's OMS. The fastest Wexford driver was local legend David James, who was testing a time attack Mitsubishi Evo 6. Second overall at Feather Dunsey was the best result we've seen from a saloon in a long time. Ken Tracy seemed to find his way around the slippy tar and was the fastest of the smaller engine rally cars. Seamus O'Grady put his front wheel drive escort first on Saturday, fastest of the big engine rally cars, and Johnny Murphy steered from the rear in the Mark II version of Ford's Rally Legend to win on Sunday. The overall battle continued from Galway between Simon McKinley and Paul O'Connell. Sylvie Mullins hadn't made the trip and indeed McKinley would only contest two runs at Duncannon before leaving to prepare for a trip to a French hill climb. Hitting the pace immediately and showing remarkable consistency, his winning second and final run was only two hundredths of a second faster than his first. O'Connell, still learning his new car, was 2.52 seconds slower. He spun on the second run and hit a cone on the third, but got to within six tenths of McKinley's best on run four. With Simon absent on Sunday, it was a slightly hollow first victory of the year for reigning champion Paul, but the sweep in Dungarvan was familiar territory for both drivers, so the next round of the championship in County Waterford could be another scorcher.